Uh, thank you, Hendrik. Uh, good morning and good afternoon from Japan in the middle of the night, actually. Thank you for giving me this uh, opportunity to, to, to present the work in my group. Uh, in this presentation, first, uh, I'll present the well-known technical issues for the landers or rovers, and then highlight one of the critical issues, which is machine-trained interaction mechanics. And 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 I'd like to share some future prospects of the research called X tree mechanics. Uh, before starting, before okay, uh, before starting the detail of my presentation, I'd like to quickly share some uh, works related to the research and development in our group. I hope these movies can be smoothly played over Zoom protocol with some latency. But anyway, uh, our group have been working on several research projects from, from the Earth to, to space. Uh, these two movies, upper two movies, are uh, highlighting a small uh, 50 kilogram mobile robot that can support for form farmers work in, in eggplant farm or um, grape farm fields. These robots are uh, autonomously following the, these farmers, which is a certain distance by capturing a red color object. The middle one, <clears throat> this middle one, uh, indicates a demonstration of an unmanned construction machine having dual arm. Uh, in this movie, uh, this movie is a demonstration, kind of demonstration for, for showing that the machine is trying to lift up the roof and let a victim inside of the, you know, pancake crushed house. Our team is, has developed a preliminary uh, simulation in which we can analyze how safe and how feasible this demonstration will be. The most uh, bottom movies, uh, the powered wheelchair or truck chair developed for a competition called Cybertron, organized by Etihad Zurich. Uh, this robot uh, can traverse on rough terrain, yeah, rough terrain, uh, or even steers, actually. The wheelchair also has a robotic arm capable, capable of uh, six degree of freedom and autonomously detect the door knob and grab it and then open or cross the doors. Of course, these technologies are earth-based one, but I hope, I believe that um, <clears throat> these technologies would be useful for human robot exploration in the future. Well, uh, as for the space exploration, maybe I should use a laser pointer. Yeah, we have also been working on developing a breadboard model of small probes. The only directional uh, rolling robot has uh, three actuators inside of the robot that can collimate the onboard camera towards any direction like a zimbal system. We have also developed a 10 security robot. I don't think this movie is starting. Okay. Um, the 10 security robot like a super ball bot developed by NASA and carry out some machine running for generating appropriate uh, gate locomotion mechanism. Uh, the probe, the small one, uh, this is a prototype model for a lunar lava tube mission, which is about 200 millimeter in length and 100 millimeter in diameter. The mission scenario of this probe is that the probe is thrown into the lava tube and the cameras mounted on the probe captures the feature points of the side wall and, and, and recreate or reconstruct the sidewall of the lava tube using the SRAM or structure for motion. Also, we have spent a um, lot of time to creating some uh, high fidelity simulator. As you see in the left side, uh, 
we developed a SkyCrane simulator for a Martian landing system. Here, the simulator carefully models the flexibility of the cables, and we, we use this simulator to evaluate a sophisticated uh, winch control mechanism that, that enable a robot to safely land sloped uh, Martian terrain. This movie is in the right, uh, right side, <clears throat> shows a field demonstration uh, in which we, we, we spend a lot of time to mount uh, scientific tools on the rover and perform uh, science and engineering tests. The technical issues for the landers or rovers are subject to the field of the planetary bodies and distance from the, from the Earth. We need to carefully consider the heat radiation or off-road terrain for designing thermal uh, power system or electrical system. Of course, the off-road train would degrade the performance of the lander mechanism or rover mobility. A known environment or communication latency uh, will, will require the spacecraft to have a certain level of autonomous mobility or autonomous uh, performance to execute the mission regardless of human intervening. So apart from, um, interplanetary spacecraft. When designing this kind of lander or rover, uh, typical uh, subsystems like a uh, thermal system or battery system or guidance and navigation control system <clears throat> would highly depend on the machine train interaction because they literally touch on the surface of a planetary body and we cannot ignore any dynamic effect between the machine and train uh, for designing running part or running gear or analyzing stability of the lander. Or well, we need to know the impact force to the wheel or motor. So uh, as far as autonomous mobility is concerned, the rover's traversability is often calculated from the machine train interaction. And that is essential to plan a pass using uh, algorithms like uh, ester, dister, or RRT, and others, which which can explore trees for the rover trajectory. So the machine train interaction is very fundamental aspect for designing the lander or the rovers. So uh, uh, in a, in my research group, the left one uh, shows a model experiment for landing pad design we exploited a similarity row of this type of experiment. Uh, the upper right one is the single wheel test bed where we tested the traction uh, performance of a rigid wheel on sandy terrain. And also we employed a discrete element method to identify the performance on the traction on sandy terrain. Also, uh, one of the typical approach in my group is that using these kind of in-wheel sensor or in-wheel camera that can capture the soil flow as well as um, uh, normal stress distribution in order to accurately model the interaction mechanics. Also, the lower one is an in-wheel camera that directly observe the interaction patch and we can analyze how the side strip under the wheel is generated. Uh, however, <clears throat> this um, experimental study may have been uh, acceptable for, for, for the spacecraft in the past, but in coming decades, we need to pay attention because these tests are limited in non-vacuum and these are performed in under one G test. So uh, <clears throat> as I summarized in this table, the mass of the present rover, like accuracy or perseverance, they, uh, their mass is about 900 kilograms and it travels relatively slow about 0.1 kilometer per hour. 
But in near future, maybe in coming decades, for example, uh, manned pressurized lunar rover designed by Toyota Motor Company and JAXA, that will be 6,000 kilograms and it will be planned to travel 10 kilometers per hour. That is very, very fast as compared to conventional well, present uh, rover. Uh, therefore, we need to have an enhanced machine train traction that being capable of dealing with low gravity, high speed, and heavy weight. So uh, in Japan, we have been trying to create new regime called X Tree Mechanics, Extra Terrestrial Tree Mechanics, uh, that can deal with the interaction between machine and granular media in space environment like micro low gravity and high vacuum. Of course, the terminology X Tree Mechanics has been had been named at Caltech in 2011. Uh, anyway, our, our team showing in this photos uh, consisting of these Japanese fellows have been working and particularly analyzing the characteristics of Gradiano Merida using a public credit campaign and our gross mission at International Space Station. And also we have been working on render analysis as well as robot analysis uh, I'll introduce, in the following slide, I'll introduce some highlights from these uh, uh, tests. The first one <clears throat> is the parabolic flight campaign from uh, Professor Kobayashi's work. Uh, in his work, uh, the left one, oh, the movie is not so smoothly played. But anyway, the left movie is, is, is the test of a wheel having 1.0 mass under 1.6 gravity by a par parabolic flight. The right one is the test of a wheel having 1.6 weight and uh, 1G. So, so basically the vertical load, vertical wheel load, M times G to the wheel are the same. However, clearly you can clearly see from these movies that <clears throat> the left one, Left wheel was trapped by the lunar regolith simulant. Uh, this test implies that the reduced gravity test or reduced weight test under 1G is not acceptable for, 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 for an accurate mobility analysis. Uh, this is because of the hard fact that the gravitational acceleration also works to each particles of the sand and those in in low gravity is somewhat relaxed as compared to those in 1G. Uh, in other words, the particle is low gravity easily moves anywhere. So in order to um, uh, reveal such characteristics of the granular media under low gravity, we performed a mission uh, called Hourglass mission. Uh, in this mission, we developed eight types of small, very small hourglasses that contain eight different of uh, granular media <clears throat> and put them on the centrifuge mounted on the ISS. Uh, this movie clips shows the overviews of the hourglass. The left one is the test video we took on the ground test. The left, right one is a low gravity situation. You can see that the granular media, uh, which is uh, alumina bees in this case, get stuck at some part, maybe here, get stuck and then start it flows. So once we um, analyze these motions, I mean, streamlines or static characteristics or dynamic characteristics of, of, of granular media, uh, we can somehow use those knowledges to, to analyze the lander and rover uh, mobilities. Uh, this is a typical, um, yeah, this is a typical example. Uh, <clears throat> these movies are indicating um, angle of ripples in different uh, gravities. Uh, we, we found that the angle of ripples 
is inversely proportional to the gravity. This is somewhat makes sense because we know the conservation of energy. So uh, this finding may, may lead to the fact that the internal friction angle of the third particle may be inversely proportional to that, to, to the gravity. So we can somehow use this knowledge to the mobility design of a rover. Also, uh, we have been analyzing this type of streamline, but so far we are trying to find appropriate parameters for discrete element method to be compatible to this type of result. Uh, so uh, as for the analysis, maybe time is almost up. Uh, as for the an analysis of the high speed mobility on Sunday train, we employed a theory called dynamic resistive force theory proposed by Aga Waller et al. at MIT. This, this theory is based on constitute, constitute below and it is very computationally efficient and it can consider the rate dependency. So we employed <clears throat> this theory to our robot wheel and then found that this theory is really good at re uh, good at um, revealing some cyclic uh, fluctuation due to the, you know, these kind of browsers on the surface of the wheel. Uh, this is the last topic of my presentation. Uh, this is a kind of a high fidelity dynamic simulation of the pressurized lunar rover. Here we set up a vehicle having 6,000 kilogram mass and let it travel with eight kilometer per hour. And in the simulation, we set different positions of the center of the gravity, wheelbase, thread, and analyze steering characteristics. This graph indicates that the horizontal axis is the difference between the slip angles of front wheel and rear wheel. This is the um, common metric to analyze the steering characteristics. The vertical axis is a rollover index. So changing the thread and steering angle, we could somehow find an appropriate uh, wheelbase as well as a thread. And during the simulation trials, we got this exciting uh, result in which the vehicle drives us drawing the figure of eight like Cows. All right, uh, this is the last slide of my talk. <clears throat> uh, this flow chart indicates the steps for the high fidelity simulation for spacecraft design in the future. At the pre flight, we need to solve a design problems and somehow get feasible or plausible answers. At the in flight, we need to obtain information that derives. Um, answers for the problems. And after the flight, we can check the answer and enhance the, the simulation technologies. Uh, in 2020, we are here and in coming years, we will have, I mean, in Japan, we will have STREAM, which is a lunar landing uh, module, uh, Martian moon's exploration and the future missions will give us some more answers so that we will be there. I mean, we will get more high fidelity simulator for spacecraft design. Uh, that's, that's all I have today. Thank you for your listening. All right, thank you very much for this uh, very interesting talk. Um, we have some time for two questions, I would say. So if people have some questions, they, they are free to write it in the chat. Um, meanwhile, maybe I ask the first question. Um, related to the simulation of the, the wheel soil interaction, you mentioned the DEM, and there are certainly other theories like the elastoplastic model and so on. So, which one did you find uh, most accurate for now if you also want to have the, the, the controlled wheel in the loop? Hmm. Uh, actually, uh, we employed them, we have employed them for a year, and we don't have any. Uh, detailed knowledge for them, but
but as long as I understand for DEM, it can create a lot of type of features for particles so that the accuracy of the dam itself is very high as compared to elastoplastic theory. So I prefer to use DEM, but it takes a lot of time, as you may know. So it kind of trade off between computational burden as well as the accuracy of the simulation. Do you also combine the DEM with um, a controlled motion of the wheel? So to see what is the interaction between the maybe traction controller of the vehicle and the, the physics simulator for the DM of the soil? Like to combine uh, the two things? All right, uh, we have not yet tried to uh, incorporate the DM to the multi-body dynamic simulation, but we will try, we will see how a type of controller for rover will be useful in such technique. So we have one question in the chat from Kagri. Kilik. Um, okay, so, uh, let me check. So okay. I, I, I just read it. What do you think about the reliability of using machine learning techniques to estimate terra mechanics properties for the deformable wheel? Deformable terrain interaction. Ah, so, so the deformable wheel and the deformable terrain interaction. So how do you see machine learning techniques uh, come into play here? Should we still make use of like simplified vector equations or um, or maybe just learning the behavior could, um, could be a potential solution. Mm, that's a good question. Uh, as far as I know, uh, our team is trying to use a machine learning for chair mechanics, but <clears throat> basically the mas machine learning is good at um, interpret the result obtained from the experiment, but it can it may be not able to extrapolate the, the physical phenomena. So we can rely on the machine learning if, if we have a bunch of experimental data, but if not, we, we carefully use machine learning technique for term mechanics. Mm 